Bad on Bears fans, another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast coming your way. Pat the Designer, Jason McKee in the building. We got a breakdown and a little preview of uh, Bears versus Houston because, J-Mac, uh, there's panic in the streets about this offense, the offense that we saw. So we got to talk about that a little bit with you. And then you got a chance to look at the All-22 from Houston. I got a chance to take a look at that as well. Can't wait to kind of get our thoughts on uh, what we think this Houston team is going to do. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> you think, hey, you think. I know, I, listen, I, I watched Stefan Diggs on that scene. I was like, ooh. <laughs> you, didn't see, you didn't see Nico Collins make that on the deep ball. Yeah, yeah. It, it, but, but, hey, we got some dogs on our side as well. We're getting, all that, we're getting all that more in today's episode of Chicago Bears Podcast. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a five-star review. Y'all know what to do. Today's episode is brought to you by ComEd. So before we get into it, let's hear a word from our sponsors at ComEd. More business across northern Illinois are partnering with the ComEd Energy Efficiency Program to save energy costs. Get started with a free ComEd facility assessment to find new ways to control your bottom line. Learn more at comed.com backslash powering biz. You said free on that. I like that word. That's a free. great word. That free. free. My favorite word in the English dictionary. Uh, J Mac, I tell you what was free for the Chicago Bears on uh, last Sunday was uh, takeaways. They were coming oh. left and right. Uh, I, I, I don't know if we can call it free or we can call it a five finger discount. However you want to call it, the Bears had plenty of them. And I think that is one reason why I head into this Houston week. Not as concerned, even after watching that All-22, even after seeing how how good C.J. Stroud is. You know how you, like, you're like, well, maybe he won't do it again. No, he did it again. He's, he's yeah. still good. It was real, guys. Um, when you think back to that game, though, defensively, is this Bears team set up for success versus the Houston Texans? Yeah, I think so. I think just because of the way they play. You know, when, when Coach Blues first took over the job, he pre- hits principles, and in the first – you know, year we didn't really see that, especially last year, like the first half of the season. Yeah. We didn't see that hits principle. We didn't we didn't see guys flying around. We didn't see the takeaways. They made the trade with Montez Sweat. It sparked the defense. And then we saw the takeaways coming in bunches, right? And they just picked up where they left off. You know, you see guys flying around on his defense. Um, you see a lot of young new guys, you know, adding, you know, adding um some playmaking ability to this defense as well. So like I always say, they've got blue chip players at every level. You talk about Sweat, you talk about Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards, a linebacker, and then you talk about Jalen Johnson and you know out there at corner. But you also bring in a veteran that's had success in Kevin Byard. So you know I think they are. Um, Houston has a lot of weapons on offense. You know they they're a well balanced offense. You look at this past weekend against the Colts. You look at Joe Mixon, who was traded from Cincinnati, had a really good game. He got 30 carries, but then you look at CJ Stroud put the ball in the air over 30 times. So you know, with, with, with Bobby Slow, who's with the Houston Texans offensive coordinator, right? A guy who, you know, derived from that that Shanahan tree. You know, he was with uh, with Mike Shanahan out there in Washington and then went on to uh, San Fran with Kyle Shanahan. You know, he was there with with uh, uh, Le, uh, Matt LaFleur, who's the head coach of the Green Bay Packers. So he, he they run offensively when you look at the Houston Texans, right? Similar scheme to what the 49ers run similar to what the uh, Miami Dolphins run. All of that stuff is kind of tied together. Right. Um, offensively, a lot of shifts, a lot of motions to gain the numbers advantage on either side of the defense. But then you look at the playmakers they have, especially out on the perimeter. You know, you talk about Tank Dell, Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs, and then you, like I already mentioned, Joe Mixon, and you got a, a young quarterback who had a great rookie year coming into his second season. He looked, he look, I mean, he, like you said, Pat, he picked up where he left off, but – he just seems to have a grasp and he just seems comfortable in this offense. Like a lot of times when you watch the All-22, you know, he's going through his progressions quick, making quick decisions, plays not there, he's comfortable, he runs, he slides. Like he just has a great feel for the game. And that, and that's – when you have a quarterback that's, that's feeling that confident within the scheme and you have the playmakers to make plays, it's going to be tough to stop with this Bears defense. No, 100%. And I think de- defensively, right, you name the weapons. You, you sit there and talk about – you know, for every weapon they have, I think we have a name. Yeah. And the one name, the two names that I was watching closely in this first game, I think they showed their importance. And now you feel a little bit more confident. Those two names for me were Javon Dexter and Tyreek Stevenson. Tyreek Stevenson, for the exact yeah. reason that Tyreek Stevenson had to be. Now, you got – you. What, what do you call that as, as a former player, right, where the ball is like in your hands and then the wide receiver behind you is like, hey, let me get that up on you. 
That wasn't really a moss. It wasn't a reach over. It was kind of like, hey, bro, you, this ain't for you yet. No, he got – you talking about in, when, when Tyree Stevenson got mossed in the end zone? Is that, are we still calling that a moss yeah. on the it's ground? Moss. Yeah, you got moss. But, you know, my kids, but the funny thing is my kids now, it's, it's weird because, you know, they got all the new, the new sayings and slang. So now it's called like a head tap, like a head tap or I don't know. Head top, <laughs> head, I don't know, man. That's what they say now. You right. got head tap or top or whatever. Hey, hey, J Mac, I, I feel like that's on you. You haven't shown them enough Randy Moss highlights. You ha you have to bring Moss in back. Yeah, I feel like yeah. as a coach, as a coach, can we speak as a coach right now? That that was a misstep on you from coaching right there. I, you haven't seen enough Randy Moss highlights. These kids gotta know that Moss. <laughs> it's like I'm not gonna lie. The first moment where I was like, oh no, we we gotta like my my children will not do this. Uh, my uh my my little cousin came through and he you know he balled the paper up. Shot it. He said, Curry. I said, oh, no, we're not, <laughs> no, we not doing this, dog. No, I'm not doing this. <laughs> you Give me Dame time at least. Don't give me Curry. You know what I mean? Like, no, we, we, it's Kobe, and we will watch highlights for the next 15 minutes. Uh, right. But, no, the, the one, the two people I needed to see stand out did. Javon thought he did an excellent job getting pressure. And Tyreek, right, outside of that one play where he's in position for the interception, yeah, just yeah. got to take that ball away. Gets yeah. a pick six, the game ceiling pick six in the end. And I thought uh, as far as when you look at like the coverage numbers, actually, I think I might have that chart in here. I do because we talked about this over on the Windy City Breeze. First off, Jalen Johnson, a dog. They don't even look his way. You see him in the top right uh, uh, of the screen there. But then yeah. when you see the passer rating allowed for Tyreek Stevenson, and I know you kind of look at that and you're going, okay, but he's he's on the other side of the line there with yards allowed per snap on that other side of that one. Yeah, but he was the guy who was getting targeted all day. Mm-hmm. He was the guy they were throwing at all day. And so I thought because of that, seeing the production that he was able to put out there, how he was able to play defensively, I feel better about him matching up with a guy like Nico Collins. Jalen Johnson's going to be on Stephon Diggs. That's the matchup yeah. you're looking for, right? I feel okay about Kyler Gordon, even though I think that he, right, that big third down pass that gets through kind of is on him. He's just out of position a little bit. But he's there to make the play. It's just about actually – making that play he's in the position got to come away with the execution though and i think that was the theme of this bears team the entire day yeah and i think when you talk about matchups right matchups is everything because as a coach you can have the perfect play call and it doesn't work but because you have an elite player he can make that call right on either side of the ball right yeah. and and we have guys that can that can turn a bad call into good call because of their playmaking ability and you talk about guys like kyler gordon that can that's going to be, you know, inside covering that slot receiver, but also has the ability to blitz. I think that's going to be very important uh, because, you know, the Texans, they're going to have, they're going to come out in 11 personnel. They run a lot of 12 personnel. Oh, yeah. uh, so, you know, the Bears are going to be in nickel a lot as well. Uh, the Texans was in nickel a lot against the uh, the Colts because the Colts, you know, run a lot of 11 personnel and things like that. So it's going to be important for, for, for Kyler to be out, you know, to be able to, to control the middle of the field in terms of playing over that slot. But he's also going to have to put pressure on C.J. Stroud. And, you know, I think this game, you know, we saw that that Coach Eberflus was able to confuse Will Levis, you know, calling up, dialing up timely blitzes, getting to Will Levis. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you got the quarterback in C.J. Stroud. He can see those things. And he's able to understand that, hey, I got receivers that understand when pressure is coming, it'll change my route. It'll, it'll make me have to break my route off. It becomes a hot route. So, you know, playing, it's going to be a good game of chess. You know, it's going to be. Eber Pelouse versus Slowick. I'm excited to see that matchup. And like I said, Slowick, I think, is, is a really good offensive coordinator. Uh, he came into his own last year where people started really finding out about him because he was able to, to develop a, a young rookie quarterback but also put together a great offense. And, and he's picked up where he left off as well. And, you know, one thing, you know, we'll talk about our offense. And you talked about free in terms of the Comet Facility Assessment Tour. If there was no – we couldn't even get free points. We couldn't get no points. You know, no points at all. Like, I mean, we've got to be able to at least pinch the scoreboard to have a chance in this game. Like, you know, a little pinch of the scoreboard. Like, scratch just the little, scoreboard. Just a little, little, little je ne sais quoi of the scoreboard. Just a little, a little bit. It, it, a little softer, <laughs> you know, something on the scoreboard. And, and it's tough, man. I, I've been, you know, I've been a part of games like that to where we can do nothing offensively. And, it, yeah. it, it I mean, it would get to the point to where, like, you, you come off the sideline after going three and out for like the fifth time and you don't even want to look at the defense like they can't even grab a cup of Gatorade because they got to run back on the field like you know what I mean so I, I 
I'm not saying like I've been a part of games like that where we completely stunk it up offensively. Um, but, you know, it's a team game. And I think the most encouraging thing that I heard from a lot of the guys coming out of the locker room is, you know, even at halftime, offense couldn't get things going. There was no finger point, pointing. There was no guy saying, man, can you guys score? Can you move the ball? Like they stuck together. Yeah. And when you have a team like that, that shows a bond. That shows chemistry. And that's what you need. And we talked about that all last year. You know, we question the chemistry in that locker room. And I think it's 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 a different team. It's been on display. That chemistry is there. Um, so, you know, I think you know, offensively you got to clean up some things. Pass protection has got to be better. You got to be able to run the ball. You know, I don't think we ran the ball enough um, last week. And you know, my biggest fear is the health, health of our wide receivers. You know, you talk about Romo Doomsday. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be on the injury report today. I know they practice later on today. Yeah. Um, seeing an Allen on that deep ball that he that uh, that Caleb threw to him in the back of the end zone, he came off the field hobbling and took a knee right in front of me and was grabbing his right foot. And we know right. it was an issue coming into that game. So, you know, my thing is, even if he does play, how effective is he going to be? He's not going to be 100 percent. You know what I'm saying? So I worry about that, because if you don't have Rome, and you don't have Keenan out there at 100 percent. Well, all the pressure's on DJ, and then you got to bring up Tyler Scott and then DeAndre Carter. You know what I'm saying? That's Well, I, I'm not going to lie to you, J-Mac. Uh, Tyler Scott should be up anyway, because if I, if I see Valus Jones on a football field, I may lose it. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going to see him a wide receiver, though. I mean, that's, that's what I mean. I don't, I, I don't care where I'm going to see him at. He, yeah. I, I better see him in the stands on <laughs> Sunday. He better, he better, where, do, where do the inactive stand? Do the Bears bring right. the inactives out there? Yeah, he'll be he'll be in a jumpsuit today. I mean, okay, yeah, he Sunday, he need to be but. in. Uh, they got a. I, I don't know if you've seen it, J Mac. There's a beautiful blue Nike Tech suit. It's navy. It's got a little orange trim yeah. on it. That's what I need to see him in on Sunday. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> look, uh, here's one thing that I do want to ask you about though, because it, and it's the the defensive the defensive side we feel good about. I think they match up. Listen, at the end of the day, Houston's really good. But when you look at offensively, and that's been the biggest question on the Bears, did you think that it was a, a lack of operation that was the problem or a lack of execution? Of course, the passes don't get completed. That means you didn't execute it. But I thought the operation, at least in my mind, was okay. In theory, Shane Waldron schemed you three passes that could have been touchdowns, all yeah. to Keenan Allen, but Caleb Williams missed. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's it's tough. You know, you look at it like this, right? And you can't make excuses, right? I, I think it's the time off. You know, guys yeah. back in their first game, you know, guys haven't played that many snaps at all. This is the first time they played that many snaps. I mean, look at it through preseason. They didn't play a lot of snaps in preseason. You got a young rookie quarterback seeing uh, different looks in terms of coverages at an elite level. You know, he saw more vanilla looks in preseason, but now you're seeing true NFL defenses that's going to hold their disguises till right before that ball snap. And then when that ball snap, bam. The coverage changes it changes just like that. So it's it's a lot of things. And in this league, there's gonna be a big jump from week one to week two. You know what I mean? But but here's the thing, right? And I say all that to not make excuses for this offense because every team that that played on Sunday had the same thing. They had the same amount of time off. And there was some teams that literally was executing on all cylinders, right? My biggest thing is you know, you look at um you look at protection and stuff like that. I mean in the interior of our offensive line was real shaky. You know, I feel like they got out physical. And, yes, you're, tough matchups in Devondre Sweat, you know, you, it, 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 tough matchups in Simmons and stuff like that. But what, is, day, what, what is what is Devondre Sweat? I, I haven't seen that. That's, yeah, that so was, big, man. I, looking on the field, like, it was like he looked – like, he didn't even look real. Like, he, that's how – I was like – I was like, what? I was like, that's – I'm looking at my, my notes, and I'm like, that's Tavondre. Oh, my goodness. Like, when, when Caleb gave him when, on the 19-yard sack where Nate Davis yeah. problem, but it is what it is. When Caleb gave him the little uh-uh, and Tavondre Sweat was like, yeah, where you going? I was like, hey, he's not supposed to move like that, dog. The NFL, hey, it's the NFL, man. Like, the people don't understand, like, guys guys would be like, I could I could have blocked him. I could have did this. Guys on the couch eating yeah, popcorn and potato chips. I could have did this. You couldn't do beep. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Like, but that's that's the difference. And you know, like we, I, I, the one thing that was encouraging, and you know, I felt like the tackles held up pretty good. You know, I felt like they did. You know, they did okay. And they're gonna have to this week. You've got two bookends and Will Anderson and Daniel Hunter. Um, and they rotate guys. You know, they got uh, Derek Barnett comes in as well for Houston. So they got a good D-line rotation. So, you know, they're going to try to put pressure on Caleb as well. They're going to go back and watch the film. 
see what Tennessee did. And they're going to feel confident. They got a really good defense. Um, guys fly around. They play physical just like our defense. I'm not going to say they're as, as good as our defense in terms of, you know, names and talent like that. But they're a real good defense. And going down there in Houston on Sunday night, they're going to be charged up. It's going to be it's going to be a great scene. You know, they're going to be in front of the nation, national spotlight. Everybody's going to have all eyes on this game. So, you know, we got to come to play. And, you know, if, if we can't move the ball, we can't finish drives with touchdowns and not field goals. It's going to be a long day for us. Yeah, 100 percent. Listen, just just don't just don't get embarrassed again on national TV. Matt, Man, don't, uh, don't do it. Bro. Don't do it. Bro. Be a long I'm, trip, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be too mad. Hey, bro, listen, I'm not trying to do a 12.30 postgame show on a on a 41 to 10 game. Yeah, yeah. We're, doing it, we're doing it in the morning. I got, I got an update this morning. We're supposed oh, to be, Luke Alferman. We're supposed to be doing a pregame show. So, Oh, okay, okay, so all optimism, right. Optimism will be at all-time high. We're going to get everybody pumped up for the game. You know what I mean? Because talking, uh, talking about the Bears at, at, at 1 a.m., you know what I mean? If it doesn't go right, we're going to be pretty mad. I love yeah, it. Pat, let's let's do this live, Pat. Ten to ten to twelve thirty Sunday morning, a little pre pre show. Let's do it. Ten UJ to twelve thirty. UJ Mack and Meller. Yeah. Okay, okay, we yeah, that, we can make that work. We can make that work, hundred percent. Tune in for that, all. Let's Stay it. tuned in. Uh, no, man. Listen, J Mac. We know you got to run. Appreciate you for uh, uh, sticking through and, and coming through to the show. Like it's not your show. I don't know why I'm letting you go like a guest. <laughs> J Mac, get out of here, man. I don't know. I'm letting him go like he a guest. Like it's his podcast. J Mac, appreciate you, man. We'll talk to you next week, man. Well, I'll talk to you uh, tonight at the Rose. Yeah. Pull up on the on a bit, man. Bear down. Bear down. Peace. <laughs> Appreciate J-Mac for pulling up on us, man. Before we get into some of our biggest concerns that we have heading into this game, or I shouldn't say concerns, things we need to watch for heading into this game. Uh, we do got to tell you guys all about ComEd. Your company could save money by becoming more energy efficient. In fact, the ComEd Energy Efficiency Program can help your business find up to 35% in energy savings, resulting in lower energy costs for its facilities. At ComEd, we're not just moving towards a clean energy future. We're powering the future of your business. Sign up for free for your free assessments at comed.com forward slash powering biz. All right. Appreciate you guys for pulling up, showing love. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave the five star review. Y'all know what to do. Make sure that you're hitting that like button on the video uh, because uh, YouTube, once again, is uh, flipping that algorithm around. So now they're showing you likes instead of just views. And, you know, you may not want to click on the 10 like video. We appreciate you. Uh, no, man, uh, I'll say this about concerns or things to watch for um, this coming Sunday night. You got to look at that uh, Texans defensive line. I mean, there's some dogs over there as well. I guess you don't have a guy like Tavondre Sweat coming up the middle, but you still are going to be able to get some pressure on this quarterback, uh, on Caleb Williams, I should say, if you end up having the same performance that we had this coming Sunday. It was it was unacceptable. You know what I mean? Like what we saw over the middle of the field, and I know some people are trying to say, you know, it wasn't as bad as people are saying. You know, and, and Coleman Shelton I almost can deal with from the standpoint of I saw Coleman Shelton out there giving effort, and I didn't see that from our right guard. Uh, but the line play is going to be the most important thing. You're, you're not going to be able to run the things that you want to run if you're not getting the time. We've been talking about this for how long now? I mean, there were two seasons seasons into this if, if you if you're not getting the opportunity to drop back and assess what you're seeing you're not going to be able to make the right pass make the right throw make the right play and I know that some people had a problem with Shane Waldron's offensive play calling I think that when you look at it, uh, uh, when you go through the plays, I have a problem with this team's execution. I thought that the play calls were good counters. I thought that Shane Waldron schemed guys open. I think you got to make that pass, and I think we will see that this Sunday. I know Caleb Williams says that he's not nervous, and maybe he doesn't get nervous. I don't want to put my nervousness of this offense on him. Maybe he didn't feel nervous, and he just had an off day. That happens, right? Like, everybody's always like – Everybody was talking about, you know, well, he said he didn't get nervous. Well, look at that, you know, and they they were comparing it to when Justin Fields said, you know, that he, he, the game was slower to him than, than he expected. You know what I mean? I don't know if Caleb Williams felt nervous. Do I think that some of those pass look, passes look like they had nerves on them? Yeah, but guess what? I've watched the best quarterbacks in the NFL overthrow guys, and this is this rookie quarterback's first game off rip. 
I think that coming into his second game, he will be a little more comfortable. I know J-Mac expressed right putting the load on uh, uh, DJ Moore's shoulders offensively here, but if, if we're if we're being honest, DJ Moore's used to that. If you're not able to get Roma Dunze out there, we'll see. I thought we, I was uh, Sylvie uh, on the Waddle and Sylvie show gave an interesting update on that as well, talking about you know it, it could be downgraded from week to week to day to day, uh, and he could actually play this Sunday uh, with that MCL sprain, grade one. Don't know what that'll be. We'll see kind of the details on that once we get the injury report uh, out here for Wednesday. But at the end of the day, here's here's my big takeaway. The thing that I'm looking for this Bears team to do, it's not it, it's what the defense was able to do. The thing that I think I, I don't know if it's a concern yet because it's so early in the season. But what you got to see is better execution. You had a sure touchdown, whether whether it turns Caleb Williams day into a good day or not, which to me, it doesn't. Right. He goes for 107 yards, one touchdown doesn't make that big of a difference to me on 93 yards, no touchdowns. But getting that touchdown, getting that first touchdown, getting that first touchdown at home, maybe that relieves some of the pressure, especially heading into that second half. I think that the execution was poor. When Caleb was on, his receivers were off. When his receivers were on, Caleb was off. When both the receivers and Caleb were on, and we saw that as well, the offensive line is getting knocked over their own their own uh, uh, feet, right? They're, they're tripping over each other, right? Like there's There was so much that it just wasn't on the same page offensively. I think you just need to see that execution line up and it's the one thing that I do have of more confidence than not that we will see better in this game because I don't think that it was a ton that uh that Tennessee was doing that kept the Bears from being as bad as they were uh, uh offensively now at the end of the day Caleb Williams overthrows you're going to have some of those uh but you need to lessen those up the 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 touchdowns were there Keenan Allen had at least two for you that day Keenan Allen Hold on to that football. Yeah, I mean, like, and and DJ Moore, get DJ Moore more involved. I think, uh, and we heard this from Courtney Crony yesterday, and it's probably un, an under talked about story if we're being one hundred percent honest, right? DJ Moore spent ten minutes in that in that tent. Was he dealing with a little bit of something? Is this entire offense, uh, all these wide receivers banged up? Is is that going to be a problem in this Houston game? Those are things to me that that you really have to look out for. But at the main at the end of the day, the main thing that you need to see from this Bears team, I don't think it was operation. I think it was execution. Coleman Shelton, you can't be a rag doll out there. Nate Davis, how about giving me a little bit of effort? How about just giving me a, 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 a push? How about touching somebody on the other side? Like, I don't know if you know this, but like as an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman come together, they're supposed to be like a collision, not just like, oh, no, you, you, you want to get to Caleb? He's, he's right there. Just, just lock the door up when you're done. That's all, that's all I ask. You know, I, I just – I need to see the effort. And I saw the effort from Coleman Shelton. I saw a lack of talent. I see the lack of effort from Nate Davis, and that is it, – it's like nails on a chalkboard to me because when you're seeing that lack of effort consistently and just about everything that we've seen from this guy this offseason, this training camp, I – again, just like Bayless Jones, you're, you're out of rope. You're out of rope. You got to make it happen now or you're going to see what you saw in that game where – Ryan Bates out there, 38 snaps. Uh, Nate Davis, 18. We'll probably end up seeing more of Ryan Bates when it's all said and done. Uh, and, and hopefully you're able to get have a better time of possession in this Houston game. And I think J-Mac mentioned that as well, right? Uh, 30 runs for, for Joe Mixon, also 30 passes for C.J. Stroud. you got to take the football away yet again. I think we have a defense that's set up for that. I want to see, and the thing to keep an eye on, is Darrell Taylor the real thing? Is he that guy opposite Montez Sweat? Because he sure looked like it in week one. I mean, he, he looked like he was the answer in week one opposite Montez Sweat. But can you do that multiple weeks in a row? It's about stacking those weeks. Yes, he had a hot two sacks. You know who else had a hot two sacks? Dominique Robinson, his first game of the season. You know where Dominique Robinson was on Sunday? He's inactive because he never got to the quarterback again. Don't let it be just a flash in the pan. I understand 
understand, you know, that the, at the NFL level, especially go, going up against one of the best left tackles in the NFL over there, right? Like, it's going to be tough to get to C.J. Stroud, but there is going to be that double team up the middle. We saw a ton of that with Javon Dexter. Javon Dexter is a load on defense right now. That is absolutely something that offenses are going to be scheming for. On the other side of that, we really didn't see a ton of Montez Sweat uh, uh, around or uh, landing on the quarterback, but we always saw him around the quarterback. If he He's able to get home in this week two matchup. I think that that makes the biggest difference. And for the love of God, keep your eye on C.J. Stroud because if you're able to create that pressure, we know what he can do extending plays with his legs, with his arm on the move. Those are things to me that the Bears really have to watch out for. So if I was going to give my three biggest things before we get up out of here, man, I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in showing love. If I was going to give my three biggest things that I want to see this Bears team uh, improve upon or to keep an eye on heading into Houston, uh, it's the trenches up the middle. Uh, Matt Eberflus, if you need to make a change, make a change now. I would love to see a change made today on that offensive line because I think the Nate Davis experiment is done. But, of course, when you make $10 million, the experiment is never done. Um, make sure that you're getting pressure on C.J. Stroud. And listen, put your coverage guys in a great position. That's the other thing, right? When you're getting that pressure, force C.J. Stroud to move off his spot. Let those guys make a play who were able to make a play last Sunday, right? And and I know some people are sitting there. I, I've, I keep getting this message. Pat, it's Will Levis. You're hyping up Will Levis. Yeah, it's Will Levis who almost threw six interceptions instead of the two he threw and then a forced fumble, right? Like, it's Will Levis who... The Bears had an opportunity, or sorry, four interceptions. The Bears had a greater opportunity to take the football away if they just get that execution right uh, every time defensively. Jalen Johnson had an interception that was waiting to happen. Tyreek Stevenson in the end zone had a sure interception, and somehow the football ends up in the hands of the, the Titans wide receiver there, right? Like, that to me is are, are the things that if you get those cleaned up, I understand they have Stefan Diggs. I understand that they have Nico Collins. I understand that they have Tank Dell, but we have Tyreek Stevenson. We have Jaquan Brisker. We have Kevin Byard. We have Tremaine Evans. We have TJ Edwards. We have Jalen Johnson, where if you if you saw the Jalen Johnson mic'd up video, tell me you're not hype right now. I'm ready to run through a wall, right? We have the answers to that, but it's like J-Max said, you got to have a little je ne sais quoi of offense to flip on that. When you look at that Titans defense, they can get after you. Will Anderson on that defensive line. They add in Daniil Hunter. They added a ton of pieces to this team, and they are all very, very dangerous. You want to keep your quarterback as protected as possible. I would love to see Flus make that train make that change on the offensive line today. But at the end of the day, I do want to know how you guys feel, man. Let me know in the comments below. I'll be down there talking with you guys as well. As always, man, it's your boy Pat the Designer. Back at it again for Jason McKee. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bear Dime. One love. Peace.